One of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded struck remote eastern Russia. You're seeing some video now of the chaos as the 8.8 .8 magnitude quake struck. It led to concerns about tsunamis in the Pacific Ocean, including in Hawaii and along the West Coast. Storm Team 3 meteorologist Jeff Vorek joining us now to break this all down. Hey Ben, yeah, this is the most active seismic region on the planet. The Pacific Ring of Fire happens to be the name of it. By the way, the Pacific plate is running into continental plates and what this is causing is a lot of seismic activity. It is not out of the ordinary to see this strong of an earthquake near Russia at magnitude 8.8 .8, and it triggered a tsunami that moved across the Pacific Ocean. Of course, the vast body of water that is these waves while they move at 500 miles per hour, it takes a lot of time for them to get there. So what happens is a plate is thrusted underneath another one, by the way, and what that does is that will send a jolt of massive amount of water upward and outward in all directions. That energy will expand and of course it comes in the form of waves. Now these waves move at the speed of jets and it will take a long time to travel thousands of miles. In that case, it took about seven hours to reach Hawaii and a lot longer to reach the west coast of the United States. The controlling factors are the earthquake magnitude, the earthquake depth and the type of fault faults going side to side with one another do not necessarily cause big tsunamis, but you get a thrust earthquake with a subduction zone like off of Russia that causes those bigger tsunamis. And when that wave moving very quickly with the wave behaving differently, meaning that wave is moving from the bottom of the ocean to the surface, when that runs against the continental shelf just offshore, it will slow down and build upward. That wave will crash along the shore, but it does not necessarily lose its power. It will move inland very quickly, causing lots of problems. The waves along the California coast were about two to four feet, but it still caused lots of problems along the immediate shoreline. And then eventually this causes inundation along the immediate coast with flooding concerns and of course your wave action. Now in the Atlantic Ocean, there's not as much of a tsunami risk. It's just not as seismically active. The Eastern Caribbean has a complex boundary of plates, but it's not a tsunami scenario necessarily for the East Coast of the United States. Three plates meet southwest of Portugal there was an earthquake in 1761 that sent small waves across the Atlantic Basin, about two to three feet in Barbados, for example, in the Eastern Caribbean. Well, another scenario that's possible is there are volcanic islands west of Africa, and there is there are theories rather that a landslide could trigger a tsunami from that, but geologists don't necessarily all agree. Bottom line, not as big of an issue here for our region.